Hey, little lady, this video is all for you. Stay tuned. Make sure that we're in tune, meaning the string closest to your nose should be the high G. It should sound exactly like mine. I'll give you a second to tune it. The C string is the middle C on a piano. You found it by going to the two black keys and going down a minor second, a half step. That gives you a C note, C. The next note that we have is a string, it's called the E string. It is. And then lastly, the string furthest away from our face is the A string. Between it, we have high G, C, E, A. What I'd like you to do is every time you tune, make sure it sounds like that and play yourself a C major. It should sound good. The chords we have are a C major. We played that by playing all three strings open on the G string, the C string, and the E string. And then we played the A string at the third fret for C major. When we play the other chords that we know, like a C7, we're just making that seven by going through the major seven to the minor seven and holding it out for our C minor seven or a dominant seven or just a C7. They're all the same name. We just call them a bunch of different things when relating them to each other. But it is still definitely a major triad that influences the B flat rather than the B. The next chord that we know and we're learning is the F and the A note, which make an A, I'm sorry, an F major. We've got the open A, We've got the F note on the E string at the first fret. We've got the open C, and then we have an A note on the G string. That means that when we play this note and this note and we strum, we get an F major. Now this F major can be played in combination with the C major to give us. A song. But what happens when we add more chords? So we do, however, know another chord. We know a minor. If we take our F major and we remove our finger from the E string, which was currently on the F note, and remove it so it plays just that low note, or high note, or just the one closest to the nose, it's the A note, and then plays the other three open, we get an A minor. Now guaranteed, this is happy. The other one is super happy but the a minor the a minor feels kind of sad not like the major which is happier and the c major which is super happy and then our new chord of the day if we were to play f major we would keep our finger on the F, take our finger off the A note, put it right above on the thickest string on the second fret, the C string, so we get a C, C sharp, D. When we play this F note and the D note, and then we put our other finger up top with little bitty bookends, making a backwards triangle, boop, 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 we get a B diminished, or a G7, depending on how you wanna call it. This chord, like all chords, have two names. and it resolves to C major. So the chords you know out of the C major scale, C major, D minor. D minor looks exactly like F major, but we put our third finger down right below on that third, turning our F major into a D minor. Ah, very close. The next one we don't know, but you will know is an E minor. You can take the D minor and teeter-totter it and then scoot it up and bar down, which gives us an E minor. Or you could play a G major and put your pinky on the fourth fret. Or you could just play the E minor. When you play the G major and put your pinky on the fourth fret, you quite literally are playing the E minor in the second fingering. So what we've been learning is the C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major we're gonna get to. It's a forward looking triangle. And the reason why I do the G major after the G7 is I want you to understand that the B diminished and the G7, they're the same chord. When I functionally move this to different fingerings, I can move it up and I can move it down, but it's still the shape that matters. So what we're gonna do, go over your new chord, your G7 or your B diminished, same thing, and use your teeter-totter. Teeter-totter. All right, here we go. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four. Notice how I'm keeping my strumming hand going up and down while I'm changing my fingers on my uh, chord hand <laughs> to play the same chord just with different fingers. Now notice how it's going super slow. I'm gonna put down one finger, then another, then another, and play on the one in rhythm. And the reason why I know it's the one is because my other hand is going one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So essentially I'm just playing on the one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you can do this with me, you're only playing on the one. When we eventually start playing on the one and the three, these are called half notes, as you know, because we talked about this. Whole notes are one, two, three, four. You play on the one and then it decays by the time it's at the four you play again and that's why it has four beats per measure when you half that you'd have one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and but essentially we're playing on the one two three four one two three and then eventually we would just do every every downstroke. This eventually leads to down, up, down, up, which is an eighth note. And then it turns into down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, which are 16th notes. And then after this, if I were to subdivide this even more, it would be 32nd notes. And I don't think I could do 64 notes. We'll try. great but you see where we're going i really enjoyed seeing you this week make sure you play your spider exercises with your f major and your c major and your a minor one two three four second fingering switch two three four first fingering two three four second fingering so on and so forth don't forget about your spidey exercises go really slow and make sure when you switch your finger that your thumb covers the string that played right before it, meaning it mutes it. Watch how my thumb goes to this string and then I start plucking this for these notes. <gasps> and when I get all the way to the top, I go all the way back to the beginning. If you can do this five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night, this slow, eventually, it turns into something that's a little bit more like this and your fingers get a lot of mobility. You and I will go through the process of turning these half steps into do re mi fa so la ti do do re so la ti do 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 la 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 one two three four five six seven one do re mi fa so la ti do and then we'll assign certain names to them F G A B flat C D E F F sharp G sharp A sharp B C sharp D sharp E sharp F the reason why I know what their names are on here is because I've done that process over and over and over and over again. It might seem boring. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I'd love you to do it. And it all starts here with you and I clapping out rhythms and talking about awesome chords. It was really awesome to see you. Let's next time talk about one, one note plus another note becomes a harmony and then three notes becomes a triad for chords. It's great seeing you and we'll see you next week. Aloha!